Chinese crocodile lizards are indisputably one of the most treasured species of reptile I keep. I feel so blessed that I get to share my home with three of these animals. In today's video, I'll be showing you what type of work and maintenance goes into the upkeep of their paludarium home, so stay tuned. What's up everybody, welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. But as much as I absolutely love sharing my experience as a hobbyist keeping different types of specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, different kinds of small invertebrates, and I guess fish here, I wanna make it clear that I am by no means an expert. I share my experience humbly, openly, and I'm all for learning from you and having the opportunity to teach you from my positive experiences. So with that being said, today I'm going to share with you how I have been cleaning out my paludarium for my weekly and monthly maintenance. Many of you fish keepers are probably gonna watch this video and say, what are you doing, that's all wrong. And I would actually appreciate your feedback. I am comfortable and I understand how a nitrogen cycle works for sure, but what I wanna share is that you may see things that are like a face palm kind of, and it's like, oh my God, what is he doing? And that's okay. I'm not an expert and I'm not preaching a beast. That's what the comment section's for. Please feel free to offer me some constructive criticism. I'm all for it. Once a week, I do a 20% water change on this paludarium. And once a month, I do sort of like a deep water change where I'll really get in there, siphon around in the substrate. And then I do a deep cleaning of the canister filter. So we get a lot of debris in there. And over time, it really needs to be squeezed out. The way I've been doing this, every time I test my parameters, things are good. My nitrates, my nitrites, my ammonia levels, my pH is the hardest thing to keep track of because where I live, the water is very hard. But otherwise, this system has been working well for me almost a year come June. I haven't lost fish, I haven't lost shrimp, it's good. Again, feel free to offer constructive criticism if you like. But that's just how I've been doing things. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the enclosure you're definitely gonna see that there's some hair algae growing in there. I know most of you are like, oh my God, that's a death sentence, get it out of there. I don't mind the look of it. I just trim it back. It's only really growing on two rocks in the tank. I don't mind it that much. So I'm just gonna keep cutting it back and letting it do its thing. Let's start now. I'm gonna show you my equipment. All right guys, so these are some of the supplies that I use for doing my water changes. I have a towel that I'll usually throw down on the floor for if I spill any water on the ground. I have a bunch of hoses. I have, oh, where are my frogs going? Sorry about that, excuse them. I have my siphon there, bucket, and a few nets, and that's really all it takes. The siphon has a little pump on the end so that we can get the siphoning going, and I don't have to use my mouth to suck the water in. This is a nifty little tool we're gonna use to clean the tubing intake and outtake valves on the canister filter, but more on that later. All right, let's get in here and take a look at what's going on in the paludarium. And as you can see, one of my female Shinosaurus is out and about. She's basking under the heat light. Hello there, beautiful. She deserves a silkworm snack. There you go, girl. Enjoy this. Yeah, come on, don't be shy. Yep, yep, you got it. Oh, nice. Good job, girl. Alright guys, so one of the things we're going to notice right away is all this nutrients on the surface or like this uh, oily protein you could say from the build up and we definitely want to get rid of that. It's a clear sign that the paludarium requires a water change. So breaking the surface helps but realistically it, we just need to do a water change. You can also use a protein skimmer type filter on the surface and that'll make a big difference as well. But we're going to do the water change and see how that works. As you can see though. Otherwise, the paludarium is looking beautiful. We have a really nice kangaroo fern here, some pothos that's just growing so well in the enclosure. I really couldn't be happier with how things are looking in here, honestly. All right, everybody, let's get into the tank and start doing some siphoning. 
Now, as I mentioned before, I'm going to be using a siphon pump on the end of my siphon. This requires that we have some water on both ends of the siphon line. So you can see here, I'm filling up a few inches of water in the bottom of my bucket so we can get that siphon going. Hey, silly goose, that's not food for you. Now that we siphon most of the front of the paludarium, it's time to get things out of the way in the back corner where our filtration happens so that we can remove all the debris that was sucked to the back corner by the canister filter. So now that we've cleared our intake and outtake valves, we want to get in here and siphon out all this debris here that's getting stuck in the corner. This is all pothos roots that are everywhere. Let's get in here and siphon out this debris. As you can see, after doing our siphoning, we've removed a little less than 50% of the water in this aquarium portion of the paludarium. Lots of tannins still in there, but there's definitely a difference. Now what I'm going to be doing is topping off the tank with several gallons of reverse osmosis water and a little bit of hard water that has been conditioned to replenish a few of the minerals that would be lost and certainly not added back through reverse osmosis water. Okay guys, so as you can see, made some great progress. Substrate is looking a lot clearer. I've managed to siphon off a lot of the debris, way less nutrients on the surface of the water here. So I might do a bit more of a water change to try and remove more tannins again, but I'm going to also get started on the canister filter, which is over here. I will replace the carbon bags, which are also gonna help to uh, purify or, you know, get the water clear. So I just need to do some cleaning scrubbing here. This is where our outtake was. But yeah, things are coming along in here. As you can see, it's a pretty tedious process. Plants are happy. We have the ficus pomila. This is just uh, one of the creeping ficus that's managed to climb all the way up the wall and over. I wanted to try and guide it to cover some more ground here, but the pothos is just insane in this tank. Like, look at some of these vines. I wish I could show you. They're just incredibly thick. They're anchoring into the cork background, which is super cool. Yeah, there's some massive leaves. I've cut a bunch of the leaves back, unfortunately, just because I really do want that light getting down into the water here. Obviously, if there's too much light going into the water, that's gonna help promote algae growth. The filter is really helping with a lot of that nutrients too, and I don't overfeed my fish, so tank is really looking nice. It's grown in so much. You compare it to when I first decided to do the uh, change in the layout. I've been thinking about getting maybe one or two more branches to add. There's a lot of empty space here. I just don't have too much crisscrossing from this side over because I do like that there's an open area here for the Shinisaurus to hang out in. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, how many of you guys keep reptiles and fish? Let me know in the comment section down below and I'm curious to know what type of fish you're keeping. Are these animals you're cohabiting with reptiles or do you have a distinct fish tank, aquarium? Are you keeping salt water? Are you keeping fresh water? Let me know. I'm curious to know how many of the hobbyists that are interested in my content are also keeping aquariums with fish and other types of aquatic animals. As always, I'll give your comment a heart and we'll engage in a little bit of a conversation. All right, everyone. So we're going to now take the canister filter over to the sink and do a full clean of the filter. All right, guys. So the next thing we're doing, like I said here, is cleaning out the canister filter. So I have my towel down here for putting clean parts on. We're going to take off the lines, the intake and outtake, open this up. I have some fluval carbon here and new packs in there that will go into the bottom part here. Media, we don't wash. I don't want to get any of the beneficial bacteria off but we are going to get in here and clean off both sponges here. So let's go ahead and do that.
Now, call me a wimp, but usually when I get to the sponge filters, I really do try my best to save as many of the baby shrimp as I can. I just can't flush all that material down knowing that there's little guys in there, so I grab them all out and put them back into the paludarium. Just try and save as many as I can. Now as you can see here, I'm using cold water to rinse as much of the debris off of the sponges as I possibly can. The reason I use cold water is because I'm also trying to save as much of the bacteria that's on these as possible, and I imagine that using hot water is only going to kill it all off. Again, we're not going to be rinsing out the biomedia, which will harbor most of the beneficial bacteria, but I don't want to rinse away all of it if I can keep some of it on here. Alright everybody, the last thing we're doing is adding fresh activated carbon to a bag, zip tying it and plopping it in the middle after we've rinsed it off, reinsert our filter sponges, and we're set to put this canister filter back to work. Every time I do a water change, I like to douse the filter media with a bunch of stability, which is the liquid beneficial bacteria, as well as some prime water conditioner. Now that we've poured in our potion of supplements, we just need to top the whole canister filter off with water and plug it back in to operate. The moment of truth, here we go, and it's on! Woohoo! Everything is running smoothly and we can add back our frog bit, rearrange some of the hardscape in the tank and as a finishing touch I like to take some vinegar water solution and my little scrapey blade to clean off the glass for everyone's viewing pleasure. And that's about it! I sincerely hope you guys enjoyed learning about how I maintain the cleanliness of my Shinisaurus Crocodilurus Paludarium. If you guys have any questions or comments you want to add, definitely drop them in the comment section down below. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch today's video. If you want to see more videos pertaining to my Chinese crocodile lizards, check out the link up above. Otherwise, can't wait to see you guys in my next video on Friday. Take care everybody.